Hi, good afternoon. I'm Jane Gould and I'm with the, an instructor with the TRIPS program and I'm here today to help you to learn more about your smartphone. When you first start using a smartphone, it can feel like you are all thumbs. In the video today from the TRIPS program, we are here to help you with some basic gestures that you will need for your smartphone. Let's talk about what gestures are to a phone. Finger movements, how you touch the phone screen, are like a written language for your smartphone. They are the way you communicate with your device so you can tell it what to do. The phone is always waiting for these gestures so it knows what to do next. It doesn't matter if you're using an Apple phone or an Android one. Now keep in mind that how you touch the screen and how long you hold down your finger on the screen matters. Gestures are not complicated, but you will need to practice them to get more proficient. It's a good idea to stop this video in places and just practice. Generally, you will be using the tip of your index finger. If you have arthritis or a similar condition that limits your dexterity, then follow along with a stylus or even the eraser tip of a pencil as you learn the gestures. So here are some basic finger movements we will need to practice. And we'll do a single tap and a double tap. Then we'll look at swipes, we'll swipe up, We'll swipe down to the left and to the right. And we will also be using two finger drags. Generally, you drag with your index finger or index and middle finger. You spread them out to zoom in and you pinch to zoom out. So let's see how these finger movements apply on your phone's apps. The tap. So first of all, let's find the Google map icon on your screen and do a quick tap like this with your index finger to open it. Using your index finger, the map, the tap is a quick touch of the screen on the thing you want to activate. The tap is probably the most frequently used gesture you will use on a smartphone. Let's spend some more time with it. At the bottom of the map, you'll see Explore, and when you tap it, some options appear at the top of the screen. Find restaurants, parks, gas stations, and so forth. You can tap on one of these, or if you tap on the small gray box at the top of the page, it will open up a virtual keyboard. And there you can type in, search for anything you like, broadly restaurants, cuisine, the name of a restaurant. If you want more information about the locations you are seeing on the map, you can tap on the icon and learn more about the location. For example, the ratings or the distance, the website, and so forth. That's all there is to it. As you can see, the tap is essential. We are doing more tapping here than Fred Astaire. The next gesture is swiping. It's essential to know how to swipe when you work with most digital pages. The swipe will move your map up and down or left and right and change the geographic area it shows. Here is how you swipe. You start with a light tap, but hold your finger on the screen and move over it in the direction you want to explore. Generally, it's left to right or up and down, but on a map, you can move your finger in any direction. So again, place your finger on the screen and move over the surface without losing contact. You lift up your fingertip when you want to stop. Again, most people find it easiest if they use their index finger. Let's try the swipe one more time. If it doesn't work, stay on this portion of the video and practice. We promise you'll get it in due time. We're going to talk about the finger movements, pinch and spread. These are essential when you are navigating with a map, pictures, documents, and websites. They can help you zoom in and zoom out to see more or less detail. So if you don't have your reading glasses, this is really useful. To zero in on a location, start by touching two fingers, most likely your index and middle finger, apart on the screen and spread them as if you're making a victory sign with them. 
See what that does? It zooms in and it magnifies the local area. You can even read the street names. To see the broader area, you do the opposite. You pinch to move your two fingers together. It zooms out so you can see the surrounding area. This is called a pinch. If you don't mind the metaphor, it's like the pinch of a crab. So let's do that again. Take two fingers and spread them apart in a V shape to zoom into a location on the map and see more street detail. Now use the pinch, two fingers that come closer together to zoom out. You will find this pinch and spread movement very useful when looking at pictures. You want to close your apps to protect your privacy and also to preserve the battery of your phone. So closing an app will depend on the phone model you have. There can be different gestures for different phones. So we're going to show you some of the most common ways to close your apps and get back to the home screen. On older phones, there's a button at the bottom of the screen in this area that you tap, and that takes you back to the home page. On an Android device, the button is virtual. You just tap it, and again, you are back at the home screen. You've closed the apps out. On newer Apple phones, you have to use two gestures. First, to close an app on a newer iPhone, you need to swipe with your finger upward from the bottom of the screen. You can go up, I go up about a third of the mile from the bottom and then I stop. This is what Apple calls the tray. And the app is still open even though you don't see it. Next, you have to go into the tray and flick your finger upwards on the app. The flick is a tap that moves upward and releases. It's a good idea to look at the apps you have open in the tray from time to time. It's easy to forget that they are there since they're out of sight. So go ahead and close all of them. So finally, now that you see how finger movement works on a phone, we're going to show you how to find something really useful. All phones have a special function called accessibility. Within the accessibility feature, you can activate voice commands or you can pair your smartphone to your hearing aid or make the screen bigger or smaller. That's just the beginning. There are so many different features and ways to customize your phone to work better for you. So let's finish off with an example. Let's say you need to make the text on your phone big enough so you can read it with or without reading glasses. Here's how to do it. On an Apple phone, you will tap the settings icon to open it. The settings icon looks like a window fan on an Apple phone, and it looks like a gearbox on the Android phone. Here on the Apple phone, scroll down until you come to accessibility. Tap on it, and you will see lots of options. Let's say that you wanted to increase the size of the font on your phone so that it's easier to read. To change the size of the font, tap on the display and text size. You have lots of options like bold and larger font here. And it's easy to do this when you know how to tap. And we'll use the swipe from the bottom of the screen to get back to the tray and then close the app out completely with a flick. We hope you've enjoyed this short video on gestures for your phone. Once you get familiar with the taps and the swipes, we hope that you'll share these techniques with other users who are just beginning and learning how to use your phone better too. And pretty soon you'll be able to get moving and you'll enjoy the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks.